hearty welcome to the overview of the anatomy of the heart. The heart is a hollow muscle organ. It drives the complete blood circulation system by its rhythmic contractions. The heart has four surfaces. In the front, the facis sternocostalis. At the bottom back, the facis diaphragmatica. And right and left, the facis pulmonalis dextra and the facis pulmonalis sinistra. One can already identify the divisions between the four heart chambers from the outside. The sulcus coronarius, which stretches around the whole heart, marks the division between the atria and the ventricles. The sulcus interventricularis anterior and the sulcus interventricularis posterior mark the division between the left and right ventricle. Let us now discuss how the coronary arteries run as a rule. Coronary arteries are functional final arteries. That means that the blockage of a coronary artery branch leads to the infarct of the muscle tissue supplied by this branch. The arteria coronaria dextra and arteria coronaria sinistra originate directly above the aortic valve from the aortensinus. The arteria coronaria dextra runs in the sulcus coronarius to the back of the heart and ends there with the ramus interventricularis posterior. It supplies the right atrium, the right ventricle. Then here, the back wall of the left ventricle, the rear third of the septum interventriculare, and functionally important, the sinoatrial node and the AV node. At first, the main branch of the arteria coronaria sinistra runs between the left cardiac auricle and the truncus pulmonalis. Then the arteria coronaria sinistra is divided up in a ramus circumflexus and a ramus interventricularis anterior. The arteria coronaria sinistra supplies the main part of the left ventricle also parts of the front wall of the right ventricle and the front two-thirds of the septum interventriculare. Approximately three-quarters of the venous blood of the heart flows over the sinuous coronarius into the right atrium, and the remaining quarter flows over small veins directly into the heart chamber. The structures of the heart can also be beautifully demonstrated by means of the model, which form the so-called heart edges right and left in the X-ray image at a posteroanteriorum optical path. The right heart edge is formed by the vena cava superior, the right atrium, and the vena cava inferior. The left heart edge is formed by the aortic arch, the arteria pulmonalis sinistra, the left atrium with the left cardiac auricle, and the left ventricle. Knowledge of the heart edges are clinically essential in order to assign and interpret pathological findings correctly. Now let's take a look inside the heart. For that purpose, we now open the right atrium here. Blood from the vena cava superior and vena cava inferior accumulates in the right atrium. The fossa ovalis, a remnant of the foramen ovale, is situated on the partition, the septum interatriale between the two atria. 
in case of congenital defects of the septum interatriale, often in the area of the foramen ovale, blood can flow from the left atrium into the right atrium. This is called a left-right shunt that leads to pulmonary hypertension and then to hypertrophy of the right ventricle and subsequently to right ventricular heart failure. The blood then flows from the right atrium via the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. In the right ventricle, one can distinguish a midi inflow, the so-called trabeculae carneae, and a smooth-walled outflow tract. The inflow and outflow tracts are separated by the crista supraventricularis. Three papillary muscles, musculi papillaris, rise up from the inflow duct. They are attached to the leaflets of the tricuspidal clapper, tricuspid valve, by fibrous cords, the cordia tendineae. By its contraction, the musculi papillaris prevent the valve leaflets being averted into the atrium. In case of a heart infarct, in which a papillary muscle is also affected, these papillary muscles can tear loose, which then results in an acute heart valve insufficiency, which the sufferer mostly does not survive. A particularly strong bundle of muscle, the trabecula septomarginalis, also called moderator band, stretches from the septum interventriculare to the musculus papillaris, and contains the right bundle of the impulse conduction system. The blood flows from the right ventricle via the pulmonary valve into the truncus pulmonalis. From the lungs, the oxygen-rich blood then flows via four venae pulmonalis into the left atrium. From there, the blood then flows further through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. Also in the left ventricle, one can distinguish a midi inflow, the so-called trabeculae carneae, and a rather smooth-walled outflow tract. Two musculi papillaries are attached to the front and rear leaflets of the mitral valve by cordae tendineae. The blood again leaves the heart through the aortic valve. The aortic valve, as well as the pulmonary valve, consists of three cusps each. Congenital defects, infections or degenerative changes can result in heart valve stenosis or heart valve insufficiency. Such heart valve defects impair the normally directed blood flow and leads to an overburdening of the heart. The aortic and mitral valves are more often affected than the pulmonary and tricuspid valves.